This cold front will spark severe storms, and they could be the strongest ones we've seen so far in 2024 as it heads to the east, along with the many impacts coming out of this storm system from rain to snow to wind. This system has it all. I've got the details on the severe side of this system moving from the central to eastern United States, plus info on winds and snow right here. I appreciate you joining me here. If you like the maps that I use throughout this presentation, a lot of the time they are from Weather Bell. Trial down in the description. For Plus, those. if you are in these severe weather outlines for Monday or Tuesday from the Storm Prediction Center, let me know down in the comments or just where you're watching from. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you find value in this. Let's get into it. European model supplying our future radar that we're using today, and you can see as we go towards our Saturday, March 30th in the afternoon, we've got some showers and storms, pretty much classic showers and storms, nothing too severe there over parts of the Ohio Valley, some rain and high elevation snow moving into parts of California, Nevada, even um, into your parts of the Mountain West in Utah and into Wyoming especially, but overall pretty quiet start to the weekend. It's once we get towards Easter Sunday when we're going to begin to see some of these impacts start to spread through the Mountain West in the way of heavy snowfall, some gustier winds. We'll also see some afternoon and evening evening storms along a warm front here from the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. These storms, as they are elevated convection along that warm front, um, really meaning that we don't have the best um, environment in place for these storms to be surface-based and tornadic, there are probably going to be some hail producers here through parts of Illinois, Indiana, maybe Ohio as well as we go through the late day time frame of our Sunday going into early Monday. We'll also see a cold front begin to develop silently here over parts of the South Central Plains, um, and that is eventually going to be what triggers severe weather here as we go towards late Monday, our April Fool's Day. Yeah, this is not a joke. It's looking like some severe storms possible all the way from northern Texas all the way to Ohio here. We've got um, more than 20 million people in a risk area already from the Storm Prediction Center for Monday. Monday night going into early Tuesday, looks like we'll see showers and storms at least from far northeastern Texas all the way on over there to southern Ohio. Locally, some tornadic storms probably in the equation here as we've already seen um, pretty much an enhanced risk outline four days out by the Storm Prediction Center, and we'll show you that in just a minute here, but that is certainly very rare to see. So especially if you live in northern Arkansas into Missouri, southwestern Illinois, looking very interesting there. Into the Arklatex region, we'll see how many storms actually fire, but if they do, they're going to be in a very prime environment for supercell activity. So if you live in eastern Texas, continue to monitor the forecast there. Um, even if you don't look like you're in the worst of the heaviest storms at this point, that could certainly change and any isolated storms could be very dangerous there. As this moves towards the Tennessee Valley, the Gulf Coast um, regions as well as the southeast, um, late and Tuesday, we'll be seeing some showers and storms. Some of them could be severe, pushing up against Appalachia there. By the time we go towards our early Wednesday morning, it's looking like we're going to see a little bit of a polar jet stream piece um, connect with this storm system, and I'll show you that as well in a minute. So we're looking at a lot of stuff here in a minute. That's going to help out with some snowfall there in the parts of Michigan as we go throughout our Wednesday probably. We'll also be looking um, at this cold front, maybe still bringing some severe storms to parts of the mid-Atlantic um, and Florida, probably just with some wind damage potential um, being heightened there as we go towards Wednesday afternoon if any severe storms develop. You can see um, by the time we go towards late Wednesday going into early Thursday, that dip in the polar jet stream really supporting some snowfall changeover even into parts of the Ohio Valley that might have previously seen severe weather, but especially there into interior New England and even some coastal zones I'm um, showing up with an upper level low there trying to form along the coast. We will see if we could get some snowfall even closer to Boston. But for now, let's talk about the severe risk and areas impacted. 15% um, zones are in yellow. 30% zones within 25 miles of a point are in orange here from the Storm Prediction Center. If you're in 30%, that is the highest risk that you can get four days out as I'm filming this video. So certainly something to keep in mind from Dallas all the way on up here through parts of McAllister, um, Muskogee, um, at Tulsa there in eastern Oklahoma, um, even Oklahoma City really on the edge of that orange zone. Um, in northwestern Arkansas into the Ozarks here, south central Missouri through Jefferson City on over to St. Louis there as well. You, All of you in the orange zones are in that 30% zone where a severe weather outbreak is already beginning to be expected here by the Storm Prediction Center. If you live through parts of southern um, Illinois into Terre Haute there um, in Indiana, Indianapolis on over to Cincinnati, Ohio along the Ohio River there, at least a 15% zone for you, meaning at least an increase of your risk is in place. That continues eastward through parts of Appalachia. Um, at parts of his, uh, even the southern Ohio Valley and into the mid-Atlantic as we go towards Tuesday and Tuesday night, even including places like Washington, D.C. and Baltimore using the Storm Prediction Center's current outline. Now, one thing that I do want to point out here is we take a look at our mid to even upper level winds. These are 500 millibar winds, so well above our heads on up there into the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. We're looking at this pretty strong, now not a negatively tilted trough, which would mean big severe weather. That would be if these red um, colors were really going vertical over the central United States. But you can certainly see an extended trough making its way on out here into parts of the eastern United States late Monday going into Tuesday. Um, some strong 50 plus knot winds, even some 60, 70 knot uh, or more winds in the mid to upper 
levels here coming out of the west and maybe the southwest there. Meanwhile, if we take a look at our low level um, jet here, this is just 900 millibar level, which is not too far above our heads. We're looking at these stronger south winds of at least 30, 40, even maybe 45 knots as we go towards the late Monday, according to the European model over some parts of the Mississippi Valley. That continues into the southeast as we go towards Tuesday. So a long story short, we've got rotational winds in the atmosphere. That's wind shear. What that's going to do is probably support not just a wind and hail threat out of these storms, but also a tornado threat um, and a multi-day tornado threat at that. And look at these dew points. Dew points really help us forecast severe weather by looking at the moisture content. Once you get above 55, 60, that's when you're really starting to get into ripe territory. You can see a warm front late Monday here over parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. So if you're north of that, now it looking like southern um, Wisconsin, southern Michigan, parts of New York really looking safe from severe weather. They're north of that line. Meanwhile, though, this cold front here, that's where we're really going to be watching in that warm sector storms to fire there through far southeast Kansas, eastern Oklahoma. I um, mean, again, you can see these box zones that I'm drawing. That's really where we could see storms firing up around those zones as we go towards late Monday going into early Tuesday. You can see probably we'll have some ongoing convection somewhere in this zone as we go towards early Tuesday morning, even maybe further on up into the Ohio Valley itself and some of those zones will definitely have some 60s for dew points up there. It is a very juicy environment that we're looking at here continuing into our Tuesday as well, um, especially if you live on down there in the parts of Missouri, Alabama, even eastern Tennessee. This is why I really want to watch out for the severe weather threat because this is the warmest many areas have gotten so far this year, um, at least with moisture to come with it. Um, as, even as you go towards the Florida, um, Georgia, Carolina coastline, as we go towards Wednesday, we'll be watching you guys for some gusty winds as well. So just keep this in mind. Um, but And again, it's this drier pushing in behind this storm um, that's really helping to kind of push up against that moisture and create that interaction, fueling severe storms. Now, here's my own W severe scale. You can be in a zero, which is all the white zones where I don't expect severe weather. It can go all the way on up to a seven for Sunday um, from northeast Kansas all the way in over there through south central Indiana I've got a two of seven mainly for a marginal one to one and a half inch hail threat there out of storms but look at this as we go towards Monday I am expecting the potential that we're going to go on up towards a four or a maybe even a five I debated putting a five on my severe weather scale somewhere in Oklahoma or Arkansas but in these orange zones even in the yellows the dark greens you really need to be on high alert as we go towards Monday for a potential severe weather outbreak a high ceiling event developing um, with a risk for all hazards appearing present um, into Sunday night from parts of Texas and Kansas all the way in over there to Ohio. Then as we go towards Tuesday, I've got a two of seven. I should have it higher, but because of the model discrepancies that we're seeing, the disagreement, I've just got a broad two of seven from the Gulf Coast there through parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, all the way in up there to the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic, including places like Baltimore and Washington, D.C. So stay on high alert over a lot of the southeast and eastern corridors as we head towards Tuesday and early Wednesday. Now looking at this, you can see we've got a good bit of precipitation, especially Especially there through parts of Southern California out of this storm early this weekend. Um, so if you live in Southern California, definitely check weather.gov for flooding alerts. You can see um, a low pressure system moving into the central United States as we head into early next week, Sunday going into Monday. That's where it's really going to feel along that warm front some of the heaviest rainfall, especially if you go with the GFS model. So northern parts of Missouri all the way in over there um, to Pennsylvania looking like widespread two to four inches possible. That could cause some flooding locally. We could at least see a couple instances of flooding and heavier storms that track along the southern United States as well as we head um, through especially Monday going into really Tuesday there over those zones. Um, and we'll also be watching some heavier precipitation into parts of the southern New England. Um, and you can see some of that could be falling as snow. In fact, let's take a look at how much snow areas are going to be seeing out of this storm system. You can see with the model blend here really showing us that parts of the Sierras as well as parts of the Mountain West, let's circle those zones, picking up on locally a foot to two feet of snowfall. Most zones though in the lower elevations of the West, not quite picking up as much snow fall precipitation out of this event um, by the time we make our way through the end of the weekend. A little bit of snow into early next week over parts of the Dakotas, northern Nebraska, um, as well as the far upper Midwest and the upper peninsula of Michigan. That shouldn't amount to too much. Um, but again, this model blend is something good to look at for average totals, averaging out a bunch of models here. Of course, as we get the wraparound flow towards Wednesday and Thursday, look at how much snow we could be picking up, maybe into parts of uh, Michigan there, but especially into the interior northeast, we could pick up a foot plus of some snowfall there um, and continue to monitor the totals. We'll and kind of pin those down as we get closer to this event. And we could even see some Appalachian snowfall at the end of this event. Now, as we go towards Saturday in the afternoon, lots of 20, 30 mile per hour warm, um, warm wind gusts here over parts of the southeastern United States and the Ohio Valley. The Four Corners region seeing a lot of 40, 50 mile per hour gusts. Of course, we will have fire danger into New Mexico and West Texas the next few days. So keep that in mind. Some of that could eject out into the plains as well. So of course, always check the Storm Prediction Center's fire weather outlooks as well for the latest information for your area. As we go towards 
hours Monday in the afternoon. Lots of wind gusts, especially over West Texas, but a lot of 20, 30 mile per hour wind gusts over the central United States. This is a broad breezy system is what I like to call it because we've got a lot of 30 mile per hour gusts over a broad area. But as that polar plunge, and it's not really that much of a polar plunge, it's just what I'm calling it because it's a little bit more in the way of cooler air. As that moves in behind the system from the Northern Plains Tuesday into the Great Lakes Midwest and Southeast as we head towards Wednesday, we could see some scattered 30, 40, even maybe 45 mile per hour gusts. We'll see how those pick up as we get closer to this system as those could briefly be stronger behind that cold front. Um, and that will continue into the eastern United States as even as we go towards Thursday as that low is going to be wrapping back around and lingering right off the coastline. Here we go. The National Digital Forecast Database. High temperatures Saturday. Lots of 70s and 80s out ahead of the system, especially into parts of Texas, the Arklatex region, the Arkla Miss um, in the southeast um, ahead of our next storm system. But again, here we go towards Sunday. Some of those zones with the severe weather potential in the 80s on up there through Kansas all the way to Indiana. Find your location, use the key at the bottom if I'm not mentioning your exact location. But you can see as we go towards Monday, we've got lots of 80s down here over the south, central, and southeastern United States. And again, where we could be seeing that severe weather in those zones I just hashed out there on Monday. Very warm, upper 70s, lots of moist air, lots of wind shear, looking like a great environment for storms. That continues into the southeast Gulf Coast into Tuesday. Still some zones right there on the southeast coast as we go towards Wednesday, holding on to that warmth. But overall, cooling, cooling down in a lot of the east. Um, at that time. But that concludes this video. Of course, I like to do longer range looks as well. It looks like it's going to be wet towards the eclipse, so if you want to stick with me for all of the upcoming patterns, subscribe, and that's it. One Nation Weather.